Hey folks, it's Red Falcon, and these are my nine rules for internet security and privacy. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start this out by giving you a disclaimer. Just because you follow these nine rules does not mean that you will be immune to hacking or uh, any type of privacy compromise. Guarantees are for salespeople, and I am not a salesperson. I was in a past life, but I was a really bad salesperson because I was just way too honest with people. But I want to make this very clear. The idea of this is to make you a harder target. And to illustrate that, I've got these three animals down here at the bottom. So we'll start over here with this little baby chick on the left. Now, if you were a predator, assuming parents weren't around or farmers, this would be the best target. It's vulnerable, it's kind of small, they don't run very fast, they can't fly yet. So yeah, this is not where we want you to be. Now, a step up from that is this turtle. Now, turtles have a very hard shell. They can fold themselves into and protect them against um, predators. However, once you penetrate that shell, they're very gooey on the inside. So while they're not as vulnerable as a baby chick over here, they're still, they're a slightly harder target. But once you breach that outer shell, really, they're just as squishy as this chick, if not more so. So what we want you to aspire to be is this dragon over here. So um, let's go over the things we know about dragons. They're very big, usually. They're covered in scales, which are very hard to penetrate. And even if you get past those scales, they're still very hard on the inside. And also, a lot of them breathe fire or acid, so there are a lot of deterrents built in to stop people from attacking them in the first place, which is why they've, of course, accumulated large hordes of gold. So whether you're a baby chick over here, or a turtle. We want you to try to aspire to be more like a dragon. This is what we want. Now that's not saying that if you follow all this advice you'll never be hacked, you'll never have any stolen. I mean, read The Hobbit, read most fantasy. Dragons still have stuff stolen, but it's a lot harder to do than say stealing stuff from a uh, chicken or a turtle. So I'm going to use this analogy throughout the video series to kind of bring all the lessons together and explain why you want to follow certain protocols and certain circumstances and why you shouldn't do certain things. So speaking of the video series, so this series is going to be broken up into several videos. It'll start with this intro video, which of course you're watching right now. And then um, in this video, we're going to go over to the different rules. And then each rule will have a video dedicated specifically to that rule where we go in depth more on that rule and what it actually means and what I mean by certain terms. So I'll define some terms for you. And then um, within this little video segment here, we'll have demo videos where I'll show you a particular piece of software or something that you can do. It'll, they'll be very short, very practical. And the reason I wanted to go with this modular design is as things are updated, as I find better software, as certain software is no longer considered secure, I can just swap those videos out and I won't have to record the whole thing. Plus, um, if you want to watch a specific thing, you can just go to that video. You don't have to worry about skipping through anything. And all these videos will be in a playlist ordered like this. So we'll have um, the uh, intro video at the top and then it'll go in sequence from there following this format. So. Now that's over, we can actually go over the little rules. So we'll start with the first rule. Now a lot of you have heard this one before. Use strong passwords. All right. So all of you know that, that's great. But what I want you to emphasize is the S right there. You should be using different passwords for different accounts. And I'll explain why you want to do that. And um, I'm also going to talk about how to generate strong passwords, but not only how to generate strong passwords, but how to generate strong passwords that you can actually remember. And of course, no one can keep track of every uh, separate password for each account. There's no way you can keep track with all of them. So I'm going to show you how to use password managers. I'll have some specific videos on how to use different password managers, um, pros and cons of each, and it uh, should be pretty fun. So the second rule is use an account with limited rights. So a lot of you, if you just got your computer, you're probably running as an admin account, which means that you can install software and system changes to your computer. Well, guess what? If someone were to compromise your computer, they can do the same thing. 
So we're going to talk about why you shouldn't be an admin. We're also going to talk about how to set up a standard account. And I'll have videos showing uh, how to do that in different operating systems because it's slightly different in uh, each system, whether you're going from uh, Windows, Mac, or Linux. Rule number three is block third-party content. And a lot of you probably, some of you may not have heard about third-party content. You don't know what it means. So we're going to explain what this means. And um, I'm going to demonstrate some examples of software that block third-party content. But along with that, we want to talk about the pros and cons of using this type of software. Because a major example of third-party content are ads. So we'll talk about the ethics behind that. Rule number four, backup stuff you can't replace. So I'm sure a lot of you have been told, back this up, back up, you should be doing backups. That's great. But you've probably, and the next question is, what should I back up and how do I do that? So we're going to explain why one backup isn't enough. We're going to talk about cloud storage and what you should back up. And we'll also, we're also going to go over some different backup strategies and different backup types. So you can be prepared if something happens to your primary system. Rule number five, encrypt everything. And I mean everything. So we're going to talk about why you should be using encryption. We're going to talk about how to use web encryption. And we're going to talk about options for data encryption. We'll also go over briefly what type of encryption is available, the different types of encryption, and what all this stuff means. So don't worry if you've never heard about encryption or don't know how it works. We're going to go over that. Number six, update OS and apps frequently. So your operating system and the applications installed on that operating system. We're going to talk about why these updates are important. Believe me, Microsoft doesn't want to, um, they don't do it just to annoy you. There's actually a reason behind why we have so many updates. We're going to show you how to update automatic, enable automatic OS updates. And we're also going to talk about some third-party tools for application updates. So at a glance, you can scan your computer and see um, what pieces of software are out of date and uh, try to update them all. And number seven is think before you click. So this mainly is going to talk about phishing. And it's okay if you've never heard of phishing before because I'm going to explain what that means. We're also going to demonstrate some tools for validating content. And this is a quick example of your, uh, your thought process. Stop, question what you're looking at, investigate, find out more information about what you're trying to click on. And then from there, if it's valid, go for it. If it's not, stop. And um, I, the federal government has a program called Stop, Think, Connect, and um, they've got some excellent um, resources available, which I'll share when we get to this video. Number eight is lie about yourself. So we're going to talk about why you shouldn't always be honest about yourself and your personal information. We're gonna talk about how to set up alternate email accounts. And we're also gonna talk about tools for generating alternate identities. So if you're not creative with coming up with names, don't worry. I've got some sources where we can come up, we can generate identities and you can go from there. And last but not least is number nine, use MFA when offered. So we're gonna talk about what is MFA, which is uh, multi-factor authentication. We're going to talk about why you should be using it. And we're going to talk about the different types of multi-factor authentication. And also we're going to demonstrate some uh, videos uh, showing you how to use different um, MFA apps. So those are my nine rules. Um, that's generally how this uh, video series is going to go. And you're probably wondering to yourself, I didn't mention antivirus or um, any malware. And that's because in this day and age, it's more important to try to prevent an attack than it is to try to um, rely on antivirus and any malware to pick it up. Now, I'm not saying never use this software. No, by, by all means, the more layers of defense you have, the better. But I'm just saying it's no longer enough. You have to, actually, you have to do more to keep yourself safe. And yeah, and that's it for uh, the intro video. Thank all of you for watching. And down in the description is my Twitter and how to find my Facebook. If you want to uh, send me a like and follow me, uh, I'd just like to say um, I hope you enjoy the series and I hope, it, hope it's helpful for you. And stay safe out there.